this is my first try. Like, not my first balaclava, obviously, but my first knitted balaclava. And it turned out pretty well. So I wanted to share this tutorial with you guys so that you guys can make this and do what you want with it. Sell some in your shop or do whatever you please. So it fits like this and so this is the style that I'm going to show you guys how to do. I am going to use obviously a thicker yarn because this takes a while to finish because the stitch is so tiny but this is basically like the design that I'm going to be showing you guys today and it closes and just open that so that the whole face can show or half of the face. And it's a really nice finish and it's super cozy and super warm and I love it. But you are going to need knitting sticks. These are I think nine millimeters, nine millimeter sticks and the, what do you call this? This part area here is 40 centimeters. So that's the type of circular knitting sticks that I use because I find the longer ones, it's really hard to make small like hats and stuff. So this is a very great uh, knitting stick. These are actually my newest ones. I just bought these like a couple days ago and I've only made two projects with them and they're really good. So I trust these to make with this yarn. I am going to be using Charisma um, by loops and threads it's 109 yards um this and maybe a second one of these is enough for this balaclava um i don't think more than two of these balls skeins are gonna be i don't even know how to say it i don't even, two of these are should be enough one maybe should even be enough but i think it might be cutting a bit close so two is best to get and so yeah I'm just going to show you guys how to make this tutorial. So let's get started. So I'm going to show you guys how to do this tutorial. Mind you that obviously if you guys have been following me for a while, you know that I don't read patterns and I don't really know like uh, proper knitting terminology. So this is just how I go about this pattern and I hope that you can understand it and follow along. I'm just going to wind this yarn quickly so that we can have it easier as I'm doing this pattern so I'll be right back now that I have winded up the yarn I'm ready to use it so it, I usually just pick it up from the center there we go and then now as I use it it's so much easier and it doesn't roll around while I'm trying to use it so I'm just going to set that over there I did cast on 25 in the front and then 25 in the back okay so that's usually what I'm going to start by doing Kind of make my knot so that I can cast on and grab my hook. I'm just going to cast on 25. I usually count this one as one of them because I do end up using this. Not sure if that's proper knitting technique, but that's how I do. So one, two, three, four. Sorry for this one. Wait, four, five, six seven okay so now that i have cast it on 25 i'm going to turn it over so that where i ended off is now where i'm going to be starting okay and just making sure that the yarn is kind of facing all the right way because sometimes it can tangle like this and you just want to make sure it's all the right way so there's no tanglement so i'm just going to take a look and say okay this looks like this can be a little bit long for a balaclava i can tell that you know this might be a bit too big it might become a hood so I'm going to probably take away let's say 10 okay just to slow it down so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 okay so that's 20 of each okay because we did 25 right and now let me see Okay, so for this yarn that looks about right is I'm going to start knitting. So I'm going to go at the back there and I'm going to wrap the yarn around my knitting stick and I'm going to push it to the front. Okay, so I'm basically 
knitting right now. So I'm just going to go like this. The next row is going to be different, but this is what we're doing for this row. Okay, so now that I've completed my first row and I made sure that everything is straight and there's no tangles, I'm ready to do the next row, which will be uh, one knit stitch and a purl, right? So knit one, purl one is basically the saying I've realized. So basically what that means is I'm going to knit one, okay? And then I'm going to purl one. So I'm going to bring the string to the front and I'm going to go here and I'm going to put it here, wrap it around and push it back. That's a purl one, okay? And what we're doing right now, just so you have some idea, is we are making the border, this border here. So you can see there's a, like a different design. So this is knit one, purl one. This is a knit stitch and then inside is a purl. And that's what we're going to do just to give it a nice little border and like make it look pretty good. Okay, so you can start knitting right off the bat, but I like to do a little, nice little border because when we get to this here, we're also knit one pro one. So it kind of has this nice like design contrast. Okay, so let me hear it here. So I just purled one and now I'm going to knit one. Okay, regular knit stitch and then I'm going to purl so I'm bringing to the front bringing to the forward here wrapping it around and pushing it back okay and then I'm putting the yarn back there so I could do my regular knit stitch and then I'm purling one to the front okay okay so I have completed I have completed my knit one pro one okay so I made mine quite big um, or tall usually I'd probably only do like yay high but this is pretty high just to switch it up you know so now at this point I'm still facing the back because you can see the short end of the string so I'm just gonna continue doing knit stitches all around if I do feel I need to do an increase or you feel you need to do an increase I would just do an extra stitch and when you're transitioning before I show you when you're transitioning out of the knit one purl one you'll see that the purl is still like that you just want to go behind so go behind that bring that yarn forward and then set it like this okay and then you're gonna do your knit one like that and then you're gonna go behind bring that forward regular knit stitch and that's only on the pearls. Yeah, I always get confused with crocheting and uh, knitting, but I would just wrap the yarn around like this. I would wrap it around as if I'm casting on one. And that's, I'm just doing an increase like that. So this is only if I need to make the balaclava a bit wider. And now that we have that, I'm just gonna, like theoretically, I should just be going up, but I am gonna do an increase after every 10th stitch i'm going to just show you what that is so i would say that this is the back so in order for me to not get lopsided on this i'm just going to say i already did one increase one increase so this is the second so one two three i'm going to do this is four five six seven eight oh nine and on my tenth one now i'm going to do an increase okay so i'm just going to do an increase by wrapping the yarn around my finger and bringing it on just like we're casting on okay that's how i know how to do a knit increase and then i'm just going to continue okay so now we're going back to one because i'm going to do another increase after 10 stitches so one two three four five Seven, eight, nine, ten, and now I'm gonna do an increase. Okay. And I'm just gonna continue to work my way up of the balaclava. And once I get to a certain spot, I'm gonna make an opening. So let me show you. 
So for this balaclava that we made, right now we've completed the border and we're working up here. So I'm just going to continue working up until I need to make the opening for my face. Okay, so I'm just going to keep working. It's going to get, like, since the yarn is much thicker, it's going to get there sooner. So I won't have to do as many rows, but I'm just going to continue to work up. So do increases if you feel like it's a bit too small for your head. Um... But if it's not, just keep making your way up. So now that I've done my increases, I have like an intuition and I feel like this is good enough. And so now I'm just going to keep working around it uh, so that I'm just going to keep working up. Okay. And I just want to show you guys that once you come across to your increase after you made your increases, once you come to the next row for them, you want to make sure you're just doing them a regular knit stitch. So usually you, a regular knit stitch would actually be like this and then bringing it back. That's going to twist it. So you want to make sure that you're doing it from the back. So from behind here, bring it forward and then that's going to make it the right way. Okay, so this is the knit stitch, but when you get to your increases, you're going to grab it from the back and bring it forward. So this is where I'm at right now. So we've done the border, we've done the body of the balaclava, and now I'm going to be making my opening for my face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count how many I have casted on here, and then I'm going to find the middle point facing the front. So this is facing the back. And so I'm just going to make sure I'm aligned here with the little short tail here. And I'm going to make sure about here. And I'm going to count how many we have around and then count the middle. Okay, so I have 43 casted here. And so I'm just going to find the middle point of 43. So sometimes just to make sure we're on the right path. I do 43 or whatever the number is, 43 divided by 2, and I get 21.5. Usually, sometimes I round this up, but in this case, it doesn't matter, so I'll just say it's 21. And so what I'm going to do is, since I already have 3 here, because this is where the back is and it aligns to there, so now I'm just going to count to 21. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So it's saying 21.5 is the center, but we're going to take 21 like right here, okay? What I'm going to do is since this is 21.5 is the center, I'm going to say 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, okay? That might be good for my face opening. I can also measure it on my face right now to just check. Okay. And I'm going to do 14 since I'm wanting to add the rim part. By the rim part, I mean here. I want to add this area. So I want it to be a bit wider. So I'm going to have 14. And once I measure that out, I'm just going to count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14. Just like so, okay? Or I could actually do 13, okay? So make sure that it's the middle. And then usually if you have uh, markers, you can put them here so that you know when to start and end. But what I do, since I don't have markers, I'll just keep my finger there, turn it around, and count how many I have to do a regular knit for. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And after I do 12 regular knits i'm gonna go and cast off 13 or 14 and then i'm just gonna finish the rest with knit, regular knit stitch okay so that's what i'm gonna do here so i'll show you so this is the row where we're creating the opening so doing 12 And now that I'm here at my 12th, I'm now going to cast off 13. Okay, so you're going to do like this and then grab the stitch behind. Make sure it's fairly loose and bring it over. And then you're going to do another cast off until we have 13 or 14 or however 
however many you need for your face area. So I'm still debating if I should do 13 or 14. Okay, I might just do 13. So one, two, three. So let's zoom in there. Four. And now that I have casted off 13, okay, so that's for my face opening. I'm going to just do regular niche stitches all the way around. And so I'm going to go all the way around, all the way around. And once I hit here where we first cast it open, we're going to stop here and make our way back over here and keep rotating and until we get to um, where the opening is high enough to like the top of our hairline. So I'll show you. Okay, so basically just gonna pull that a little bit so we have this for the opening right and now we have to make our way from here oops we have to make our way from the side all the way here okay by going side to side now. so where we are right now is we've done this part here and now we've just made the opening so now we're going to go like work on this area here, side to side to side, all the way here until we hit to the top. This we do the last part, this border part we do the last. So don't worry about how that's gonna turn out right now. So what I'm just gonna do is go all the way around. And once I complete that, I'll show you the next step on how to bring it back around because the stitch is gonna change. So now after I've cast, I was here and then I did all those regular knit stitches and now that I'm here where the opening is, this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take the knitting stick, this, wrap the yarn around, and I'm going to pull under and make my way back to the other side. And that way we're not closing the gap that we just opened. And again, under, wrap around and pull in between okay and that's what we're gonna do and then as you see we've made we're building on that opening for our face okay so i'm just going to continue making my way and then once i make my way all the way back to this side again i'm going to do regular knit stitch and i'll show you because it's also important to do that correctly or you're going to have the yarn twisting. So what we're going to do is when you're on this side and you want to do the regular knit stitch, if you go like this and bring it forward, it's going to twist. Okay, so you want to do from the back. So we're going from the back here, pushing it through like so grabbing the yarn and bringing it forward and then again for this okay so we're going behind grabbing the yarn bringing it forward behind grabbing the yarn bring it forward and that way you can see the stitch doesn't twist but if I show you if you do it this way where you're going to the front getting to the back and bringing it it does this weird twisty thing okay so you just want to Go here, the back, 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 oops. And then once you hit the other side, you do what we just did to the previous row. It looks like you'd basically be doing purl stitches when we get to the other side, okay? And just to refresh, oopsie, just to refresh our memory, once we're here and the yarn is facing inward, we're doing this. So going here. Wrapping around and pulling out. Okay, going here, wrapping around, pulling out. And I am ready to show you guys how to finish off this balaclava. Okay. So basically, you should be at this step. So basically, you should be at this step. So you have the border, you have some area for your chin here, and then you have created the opening. Then you have completed the sides. Okay, so that's where you should be. Done is this, of course, all of this, and this is done. So now we're going to close off the hat and then work on here and add the strings, okay?
actually pull this down a bit and I'm going to cast on 13. For you, it could have been more or less. So one, actually bring, yeah, one. And you kind of want to do it with the other bunch so that it's not like this big gap space. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay. So now I've cast it on 13 so that we can close the top, the, the balaclava. Now I'm doing regular knit stitch. Okay. Boom. Boom for the rest of the row here. And what the idea is, is now since we have that closed, is for you, your, uh, like, kind of like the curve of your head might be a little bit bigger than mine or smaller. So what you're going to want to make sure is that as we're decreasing to go in, we have enough space for, because this is just to our hairline, right? So we need to kind of make space from, like, from our hairline to, like, the top of our head. And that's what we're creating here. So I'm going to do four uh, regular rows. So just going around one, two, three, four. And then after that, I'm going to look at it and see if I need to do decreases. So you can do the, you should do at least the first like three to four rows with the regular knit stitch and, and no decreases because we want to make sure that this front piece that we just cast it on is it looks seamless right so as you can see once you've cast it on and done a few rows the hole looks a bit big but don't worry because even if yours is big or a bit too, well you don't want it too small but if it's too big i don't know what to say maybe you should have done less casts off here but I can tell that this is going to be a good size, especially since when I add the border, it's really going to kind of close it in more. So back to the top, this is clearly not enough to close it off. So I'm going to keep uh, making this go up probably about here. So I'd say another four to five more rows, and then I'm going to start decreasing. Okay. So I made it to the back. I've done my extra five rows or so. And now it's getting longer, which is great. And now if you can kind of envision, like, it's kind of hard to see his fade, but like, if you can kind of vision, like, we want it to curve in far ahead. So you kind of just, like, what I do is kind of like think of the shape and be like, okay, well, I don't want it too, like, weird. So, but I think for this, like, this is so wide and open, so I want to have my hair start, like, I want this to start uh, decreasing so that it goes in. So what I usually do is, like, one every seven or one every ten, I'll do a decrease. Okay, so I did my decreases and then my two rows. And it's looking very tall and I don't want it to get any bigger than this. So I have to focus on literally just doing decreases. So I think what I'm going to do is every fourth, I'm going to do a decrease because we, it's time to close this up. It's just getting too big, right? And if I keep building up and up and up, when I put my face in it, there's going to be like so much extra top. So I'm going to start doing decreases. So I'm going to show you what I do now. And this is what I'm going to do until the circle is like this big. Okay. So when you're at this point with whatever size yarn you're using, you're, this is what I'm doing. So I'm going to do one, two, three. And then on the fourth, I'm decreasing. And then I go one, one, two, three and then four e. decrease and then I'm just going to keep doing that R row after row after row to really close it down so I did say that once I do a decrease row I do like two rows um, of knitting however it with this yarn it's much thicker and it's going to take too long like it's gonna 
it's gonna get really tall so i'm just gonna do every fourth a decrease okay and then soon we'll be done the body of the balaclava so it's getting quite tight now up here okay but that's the size of the circle so roughly like that right and as you can see i really closed off so that's what i did so literally only did every once every um every fourth i did a decrease or every third i did a decrease on the fourth and so now i'm just going to continue doing that until the circle is like really small and then i'll show you how i deal with it but this is looking really good you can see that it it looks like a cap shape and good size for my head so i'm really happy about that and i hope it's turning out well for you I just want to show you in case you don't know so when you have the circular needles and it's like really hard to like maneuver everything so this is uh one this is a decrease so i just kind of bring the yarn in so wherever i'm going i just make sure that the string is fully th there and then i'll just work here so i'll bring the string over here make sure i pull that so i'm doing three until i get to my fourth decrease so one oh one whoopsie two three and then four it just takes a little bit more finessing but it is very much possible and then once it's that i just pull it and it goes all the way to the end and then i'll keep doing that until i close it and if it's really hard to like get it all closed then i'll cast off and i'll take my crochet hook and i'll show you what to do so i think it's getting to that point for me to be honest uh but i just want to do maybe two more if i can and then i'm gonna cast off okay so now i am casting off so i'm going like this and once i have two on my rod i'm carrying this one over and that's how we cast off just take my crochet hook here i'm using an eight millimeter um i don't really need to like i could use a bit smaller but i feel like it works pretty good with the yarn okay so now what I'm doing is I'm going to kind of like weave the hook through to kind of close it and I also um, I also so I go like this so I weave it across and then I pull that through okay and then I'll go diagonal from here Go underneath those chains as best as possible, wrap it around, and I'll pull through. Oops. Okay, and then pull through again. And then from this spot, I'll go another diagonal out here, wrap around, pull through, pull through. And then you can see that the, the top pretty much closed but I still want to make sure that it's pretty flat and all of these holes are for sure gone. So from this point, I'm going to go diagonal. So like that. From this point, I'm going to go diagonal. Okay. And then you can kind of pull this if you need just to take a look at what it's looking like. Okay. you don't want it too bubbly so i will take that so now i'm gonna grab my scissors cut what is attached to my yarn ball i'm gonna pull that through and pull it and i just want to take another glance at it before i finally cut it down okay so now i'm gonna go from the inside of the hat and i'm gonna kind of get it as center as possible wiggle it and i'm going to wrap that yarn that we just cut off and i'm going to pull that in to the hat oops 
Okay, bring that through and just give it a nice like pull and it kind of brings in all anything that might be poking out. So I do that and then you can see the top is completed. So what you first want to do is make the string before we start actually doing the border. So I'm just going to set that aside. This is how much yarn I have left. So we'll probably need another ball of yarn like mentioned in the beginning. I'm just going to do as many chains as I want so I can make the strings fairly long or just the right size. So I am using my eight millimeter for this. And I'm just gonna just make as long as I want. I would say, hmm, say anywhere from like 60 plus, but you wanna make sure that the string is fairly long because you don't want to have like a very short string. So mine is like this long, okay? And it's all in here as well. Cause think if you wanna do a bow or something. So I'm just gonna chain that and see it here. That's how long I made it. Mine is that part. I am going to use it. And then when I need more yarn, I'll just use from another roll or skein is to um, do this. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your knitting sticks. This is the front of your balaclava. And see, there's like two chains. So there's this one and then there's this one, right? You're going to want to go to the one from the outside. Because if you go to the inside, you'll have like these loops sticking out so I wanted to go from here and then I'm going to put the yarn around my hook and pull it through and now it's there three spots so I'm going to go underneath the outside bring that loop around and bring it forward so underneath wrap the yarn bring it forward and again underneath wrap the yarn bring it forward and that way it just makes the cast on a little bit more simpler than me like forcefully going through and sometimes I cast off too tight so it's really hard for my uh, needle hooks to uh, wiggle in there but this way I find it very easy so there you can see that they're casting on and I'll show you that when you cast on or what we're doing right now I did it so pretty close so that there's not any big holes right on the outside okay. so now I went through all around the front by doing that and now I'm going to do regular knit stitch or you can do this knit one pro one which I usually do at this area so I am going to do knit one purl one for those who might trying to get the knit one purl one done faster. So I did knit one purl one on the outside and then I knew that I was going to be flipping it inside anyway. So then I just finished the rest with knit one, like a regular knit stitch all the way around because I knew that it wasn't going to show here and constantly doing that can sometimes be a bother. So that's what we're going to do. So you can either do the knit one pro one or you can do the knit stitch. I'm probably going to do knit one pro one since this is thicker yarn and it will get done faster. So that's what I'm going to do for this part to the front and go from the front, wrap around and pull back and then move the yarn back to the back, regular knit stitch, then move the yarn to the front, wrap around, pull back. Bring the yarn to the back, regular knit stitch, and then bring the yarn to the front, wrap around, pull back. All right, so I have knitted the border to a really long length, and so I believe this is good enough for what we need to do now. So for this part, I don't even know if this is a thing, but this is just how, oh, actually it is. So this is how I do it. So I believe I don't cast off. What I do is I kind of pinch it in. Okay, let me zoom in there for you guys. So I'll pinch in and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just go from like, so you see this area here of the balaclava, that's where I'm connecting it to. So that area. And I'm just going to go around that border 
and pinch it so that the string is in there. So I'm just going to place the yarn through what I just knitted. Okay. And kind of make sure that it's now under that. And through here. Okay. And that it's also kind of centered on the balaclava. So that's pretty centered to me. And now I'm just going to, I have to make sure that it's going to be all along here, the string. So whenever I'm knitting, it has to go inside. Okay, so then what we're going to do in order to get this going here is you have the string and that has to be inside the loop. And what we're going to do is fold over what we just knitted so that it's a nice like that and have the string inside the fold okay and then how we're going to do that is see this area again this is where we're attaching to from the inside so i'm going to go under here okay so what i'm going to do actually first is cut from this side okay and once I have that yarn, I'm going to go right diagonal across, take the string, and I'm going to pull it through and pull it through. Okay. And then I'm going to move this over and pull. So we have the string. Tuck that in there. This will fold over. We're going to take the yarn from this side and bring it to this side. We're going to go directly diagonal okay just like so then we're going to wrap the yarn around and bring it through and bring it through and then cast off okay and the last step is to just once you get back to the front area you need to push that through so it's hanging the right spot and same this here okay and once you're done and you're at the front you're just going to cut this string off just like so and then you're going to kind of feed it with your crochet hook you can just feed it through one of the loops to hold it down to do that there and get rid of it and then I would also recommend kind of show putting it from the inside because if you look here if you look here if you take the string and you go that way it's going to always pop out so try to hide it in that way so I'm going to turn my hat upside down and kind of just tie not there and then go a bit further in the hat as well and just tie that like so and just push that and tie it a little knot it shouldn't be too in uncomfortable on the face as long as you're not making the knot too big and kind of like tucks in there and then, yeah, check if you have any loose strings. You have some at the back here. Then you are have a finished balaclava. So you can see, tightens in and it stretches out. And I'll show you what it looks like. Look at that. Oh my God. And this is just really nice. And when it's washed as well, it should have a much better look. And maybe if you do like the string, you can do like two bows, like something. Oh wait, hold on. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Like that or something. That's it. And that's how I knit the balaclava 
and definitely with more practice and patience and happiness you'll make more and it'll be wonderful so yeah thank you guys for following this tutorial i hope that you really enjoyed it and i hope that you continue to make some give some